Hello there, it's Deej here on my journey to catch them all. And on today's video, we really need to talk about eBay. So in my last couple of videos, if you're here, it's probably because you've seen my last two videos. Uh, they were about people that tried to scam me on eBay. So I sell on eBay. I sold a graded Pikachu for one of them. The person tried to do a return. They literally sent me balloons. So we went over that. Then a video that you guys haven't seen the resolution of yet is somebody that bought five 151 booster bundles. They went ahead and opened all of them, said there was fake cards, said there was no hollows, and then returned it. And when they returned it, there was hollows, there was no fake cards, they obviously just took out the hits. And I kind of left you on a cliffhanger how things had progressed and not in the way that I had liked and we're going to get into that but first I need to talk about eBay so I got a lot of comments in my last video that some of you are new sellers or you're small sellers like me and this kind of stuff is your greatest fear or it's something that's holding you back from getting on eBay and starting to engage in the Pokemon market and exist in this hobby in a way that doesn't just make you broke because that's what we're all trying to do at the end of the day. I'm going to tell you why I think what I think with a personal story. So, we were all kids once. Probably most of us that are here, I hope at least, liked Pokemon when we were kids at least a little bit. I'm sure there are some investors out there that are not, and you are, you're welcome. We are happy to have you. But a lot of us at least had experiences when we were kids. And for me personally... I was a 90s baby, and when I was a kid, uh, you know, that was base set, jungle, fossil, Neo. <clears throat> I remember my parents buying me packs up until Japanese Neo. I had some Japanese Neo cards, and I did pull the Lugia. I still have that card. I think it's a PSA 5. I got it graded, but that's a card that I'm going to hold on to forever. That is, Lugia is my favorite Pokemon, and it probably stems from that moment pulling it as a kid anyways i wanted the english version so i got on to the computer like any kid would do logged on to ebay on my mom's account and bid on an english lugia auction and i won i remember being excited because i feel like i got kind of a deal at the time and so what i did was me, some nine or 10 year old kid, I really don't remember the exact age. I got my change out of my piggy bank and I put it in the mail with one stamp. I just got it out, you know, I just did this by myself. About a week or, you know, a couple days later, it came back in the mail and I never got the card. I got the money back, no card. I was so confused. I had no idea what happened. I didn't know for some amount of time. I was just a kid. I just was like, well, I don't know. Where's my card? Sometime later, I find out from my mom that her account got banned because she was buying auctions and not paying for them. So I, I'm thinking back now, like, where did I send the money? Like, what address did I pick? Is that just something that happened on eBay? Did people send like checks back then? Is that normal? <laughs> Somebody that maybe is a little older than me that can remember, is that something that used to happen? Or did I just pull eBay's address off of Google or Yahoo at the time, whatever it was? Anyways, the point is eBay brought me a 10 year old kid out of the woodworks to give money out of my piggy bank to some random seller online. Your website, whatever you do personally is not going to do that eBay brings a range of buyers from all around the world that give you access to your Timmy closet. This is actually my closet, collection closet. My Timmy closet's over there in the guest room. But the point is, again, don't be scared of eBay. eBay is your pathway to existing. So one thing that I think is going to attract a lot of you to my channel is that I am a small seller. I don't have a lot of the advantages that a lot of these big stores, these big YouTubers have where they might generate some revenue from their YouTube channel. They have a distributor, they're 
just churning and burning product. They can sell out in seconds depending on what their pricing is and they're making money so easily. And they're saying, well, you do this and this and this and this and you can be like me. And they make it seem so simple, but we all know it's really not that simple. Sure, with hard work, anybody can get there, but it takes a full commitment and really like a lot of those people, it takes some time to build up. They might have had some big amount of cash to buy in with the distributor or do the whole pre-sale thing. But then again, like that makes a lot of people uncomfortable. My point is a lot of those YouTubers, I feel like are a little out of touch. They don't realize the advantages they have versus just the regular Joe. You know, like I said, whether it's the distributor or people coming to them with here, buy my collection, I really need to get rid of it. You will have this price. And they already have the cash flow from the distributorship. They might have a deal with one of the streaming platforms where they get um, discounts on their fees or with eBay. Like they have advantages that they've gotten by earning it. Don't get me wrong, but <clears throat> when you're preaching like what to do on YouTube and whatnot, it's not everybody, but on my channel, you're going to get the nitty gritty details to how to grind out in this hobby. It's not for everybody because this is the hard work stuff. This is the stuff that's going to turn the 10 cent card into $30. It's going to maximize your collection and to do that. You need eBay. You need eBay. You don't want to pay all the advertising. You don't want to make deals. You know, you don't want to do YouTube. You just want to sell some stuff. You need eBay. Everything else is a lot more work. So you at the very least need to start on eBay. Get a following. Get Start talking to the people that are buying your stuff. Utilize eBay's support because they are there to support you almost every single case they have been helpful to me and i am very appreciative of ebay so please don't be scared okay now we're gonna dive into what did happen with the 151 case so my first step after the video that i made was to reach out to ebay on my return case and say the person didn't return it in the manner that i sent it to them and it was items missing or damaged so first of all, it was a little weird because the only option was to give them a refund and the, I could give them a percentage of the refund, but the lowest percent I could give was 50%. So it's like, it was forcing me to give them a 50 for 50% refund. So I just wasn't going to do that. So I had to go back and I clicked something like whatever I clicked for the balloon case, which is like they didn't send what I sent at all. Like it wasn't like it was damaged or missing or different. Um, it was just a different option, um, which put the case under review. Um, and this is what I said. I said the buyer opened expensive Pokemon product, took out the good cards and returned the rest opened. Buyer left a bad review to strong army claims to have been buying for a long time, yet only as for reviews. I sold a bunch and I also, opened some myself and never had issues. The buyer claimed some items were fake. I inspected every single item in the box. Not one card was fake. I would also like to state that I opened the package on camera. That is useful for you. So I'm like, okay, this is great. I'm going to get the refund. So like you could tell in my, the way I was talking as I was opening that box, I was very confident I was not going to have to refund this person. So to my surprise, the next day I get this email, which says, we have reviewed the case and decided to issue the buyer a full refund. We received tracking information from the buyer that shows successful delivery. A refund of $228.65 was issued to the buyer. This includes the original shipping cost as well. Refund amount will be covered from your eBay. So I'm like, what the heck? This is not right. So I immediately reached out to eBay and I have a link saved where it's easy to like get on a chat with them. You can either talk with them or you can request a call and they'll actually call you within minutes. And like I said, whenever I talk to them on the phone, they're extremely helpful to me because I'm never like trying to scam them. Like what I'm saying makes sense. And like, they are almost always logical and used to everything that you're dealing with. 
So once I got them on the phone, they told me they were going to have to kick neck me with one of their refund specialists or account specialists. And it took them a day or so to get back to me. But once they did, they talked to me and had me explain everything. And once I explained everything, they were obviously on my side. They understood everything and they agreed. But there are some steps that I had to go through extra. So if I never would have communicated, this person would have got their refund. Um, and like I said, I'm sure a lot of bigger sellers, like some of this stuff just falls through the cracks to them. I would hope not, but I'm sure it does happen and people get away with this kind of crap. And maybe since he already got the refund, eBay can't take it from them back now. Like this is just how they get away with it. I'm not really sure. So the next day I get this email that says to proceed with your eBay money back guarantee case, we need a signed declaration from you stating that you received the returned item in an altered condition damaged or did not receive it at all. So what they had me do was print this out right here and just put my name and sign it and date and, and essentially just say that they just scammed me and just attest to that and then upload it to a link. And the next day they said, I understand that you want to appeal the claim as a seller myself. I know the importance of the immediate decision in this matter, and we always want our sellers to have a worthwhile experience. So I will make sure to resolve your concern. Like I said, these people, they, they know what you're going through. I'm happy to inform you that I granted your appeal and issue a refund. As you have done your part in sending the document back to us, your funds will be released soon. And I already got them. It took less than 24 hours. They removed that review that we looked at and pleased. I even got another email that said I got the appeal granted and then I did everything right. And while it feels good to do everything right, thank you for telling me that. I appreciate you, eBay. I shouldn't have had to go through this and I don't like this, but again, don't let this scare you. I ended up getting my money and I have all that bulk, which I proved in the last video, I'm going to be able to make some more money on, but know your avenues to take advantage of not getting taken advantage of. And if you have ever have questions, you can find me on Instagram. I'm around the discords. I'm Deej on there. You might see me around. Feel free to message me on there. Uh, I don't have like a, a server or anything. I'm not trying to do that got enough to worry about in life with a family and a full-time job and a Pokemon store, you know, that is hard work. So there is one time when I was left unsatisfied with eBay support and full transparency, I figure I might as well share it with you. So I was sending, I think it was about a hundred dollar slab and it got literally to the person's town where I was shipping it. And then it just fell off the face of the earth and person wanted a refund. And I was, again, I thought I had fulfilled my responsibility. I uploaded it, tracking showed as shipped. It got lost in the mail. I feel like eBay should handle the insurance claims on those because you're paying the fee. Like I feel like they should manage that because they probably could have deals with USPS to make it automated and just take so much load off the seller and the buyer, but they don't. But anyways, I, at the time I was under the assumption that I could do the ASCII bay to step in and they would just issue the refund as seller and buyer protections. And both of us would get our money back because I know they do that a lot. And that's one, an, that's one thing why I'm never upset with paying the fee because I benefit from that many times. I got a defect on my account and it removed my top seller status at the time because they said, sorry, it didn't get delivered. Your responsibility is to get it to the buyer, no matter if it shows as tracking uploaded on time, if it doesn't get delivered, you're responsible. So that is one time when you're not protected. So if you ever have a post office that does that, just block that buyer. There's always other buyers out there. Even if they're a real person, it could be the post office. It could be the person you don't know. Just avoid that route of mail. That, that's my advice because I found that it's like certain hubs or, but if, a, if you have a repeat buyer that's constantly putting your stuff through that hub, putting you at risk, 
it's just not worth it. So whenever I have like a problem buyer, no matter what it is, pretty often I just block them. Like, sorry if you're one of them. If you are one of them, message me, we can talk about it. So that's really the only time I've been disappointed by eBay. If you've made it this far in the video, you must like my content at least a little bit. So please like and subscribe. And I've actually gotten a lot of new subscribers lately and I appreciate you all so much. You have no idea. It's so much fun to share some of this knowledge that I've gained over the years, especially because like I really have put so much time in. So sharing it with everybody makes it just feel more valuable. It's more useful. More is gained from my effort. So in that way, it's very selfish of me to put this out there because I'm benefiting my ego by helping you and it just makes me feel good. So hopefully you are getting something out of this. I can promise you I am not making any money on this. You have to get like 3000 watch hours. I've got like 300, so I'm nowhere near close. And that's really not why I'm doing this. I'm doing all this work anyways, so I might as well share it with you. I had some comments in the last video about how I cliffhanged you guys, and I am sorry, but that really is just like life. It really is like a constant cliffhanger and, and a store is the same way, especially when you're little like this, like one big purchase is such a big percentage of your cash flow that like you're waiting on the end of your chair, waiting for that shipment to get here. And the second it gets here, you're ready to list it or open it or do something fun with it. Like that's what you you're excited for. That's why you're trying to start this store is to just experience the hobby. So you're constantly cliffhanging yourself. So since that's what I'm doing, you're just going to experience that with me. My videos are going to be laid out like that, where the beginning is probably going to be closing the loop from the last video. And from that, I'm going to be building into a new topic. And from that topic, I'm going to be having something to look forward to the next video and so on and so forth. And <clears throat> for instance, the other day, I bought some Buddy Buddy Poffins, Arvins, Earthen Vessels off of Mercari from somebody that just bought a bulk lot and was just trying to offload them. And I knew I was going to be able to put them on TCG Player and just get some instant profit. I was so excited for those to get here so I could list them. So on to what I'm doing for the next video. I'm going to be talking about how I 50 x my Pokemon portfolio, my collection, my inventory, all the above, how I 50 x it on the last cycle of English hype, how I'm still capitalizing on it today. You don't want to miss it. Stay tuned, subscribe, like, thank you so much. Have a good day. Thank you for joining me on my journey to catch them all.